The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, everyone. I'd like to welcome you back to another KevCam Night Class tonight. Tonight have uh, kind of something special for everyone. It is going to be uh, Sydney showing us all the uh, kind of the sneak peek at Solid Cam 2021. And uh, to help out, we got Mr. Steve Walsh to uh, help any, with any questions. Steve, are you with us? I am. Even, evening, everyone. And uh, both Greg and I get to make sure that uh, Sydney stays on task tonight and not uh, Greg making sure I stay on task tonight. So, uh, Greg, good morning, morning everybody. <laughs> yeah, good it, morning. Or a good evening, everybody, <laughs> for me. Yeah, good morning for me. This is Sydney speaking. It, and what is it, uh, Sydney? Uh, four it's in the morning. Four o'clock in the morning. No, it's it's four o'clock in the morning. Oofta. All right, yeah. so Sydney decided to wait you up at four. You owe, you owe me big time on this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this, Sydney decided to wake up at four in the clock in the morning so we could uh, show this to you guys. And um, like usual, um, everybody, or for those that um, have not been to a webinar before, everybody is in mute, just to eliminate any background noise. Um, if you guys do have questions, definitely type those into the questions panel, and uh, we will address those um, probably at the end. And uh, with that, uh, being said, we'll switch over to you, Sid. Okie dokie. Just don't turn All on right, your webcam. Like... Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to scare anybody. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. First of all, you guys do see my screen. Is that correct? I did. Good. Okay. Uh, all right. So I hope my connection is well today. Okay. Basically, what I will be doing. Uh, in this uh, little short session that we have over here, is I'm going to be showing mainly the uh, some of the basic features uh, or the basic look on how to work with the new tool table that we have inside 2021. Now, when it comes to the tool table, uh, this is probably one of the most important parts, uh, aside from the coordinate system, this is probably one of the most important parts within the a program itself, because no matter what you do, you always have to work with the tool table. And uh, there were some basic uses that, there, that you were always able to do, but you weren't able to use all different types of complicated tools. What I'm going to do basically today is just go through some of the basics, uh, just to show that it may look different. And I'll even open it up for you right now. Right now, I'm working uh, in a machine that do not have a tool table connected to it. So my tool table is actually empty. And uh, it, as, you, as you can see, it already looks different, but I'm also gonna show you how easy it is to work with it. Okay, uh, let's basically broken up into three different sections. If we take a look at the section on my left-hand side, this is the area where we are bringing our tools in from, okay? Whether it be end mills, whether it be uh, drills, um, special tool cutters, um, holders. Uh, if we're uh, importing from a third party, uh, all those options uh, are over here. I'm gonna be basically working with the end mills and maybe even the drills also for now. This section over here, is the actual table where you'll see all your tools. This section over here, as we start pop populating our tool table, you'll see the actually actual topology of the tool and the um, cutting conditions of the tool as well. So uh, we'll start by bringing in our first tool. And I'm gonna start by bringing in an end mill. How do I bring it in? Two simple ways. I can either drag it into here and our end mill is inside over there, okay? I'll right click on it and delete it also, or I can just double click on the tool and it will come in here as well. And what you'll note is we have one component, okay? I'm specifically calling it a component, okay? Actually a, a station, so it's actually one tool uh, station that has in it the end mill, okay? You can see immediately the moment that brought the end mill in, we have also the topology of the tool. You can see also here on the left-hand side is where we control what do we want to see, the topology or the cutting conditions 
We have also properties. We also have also connections. We really don't need these in most cases for standard milling. So I'm just going to concentrate now for the topology and the uh, the uh, cutting conditions. So in the topology page, we have all these familiar uh, variables over here. It would be the diameters. Uh, or the length issues over here, including outside holder. We've also added in here, uh, you'll note there's no I data in here. Everything is actually added inside the tool. So for example, we have the helical angle is over here. So you don't have to go searching for it uh, in a different part because the helical angle actually is part of the topology of the tool itself. Now you'll also note that next to each a value, it says six millimeters. So you know what unit or immediately you're working in. You can also swap unit data from millimeter to inch, swap to inch, swap it back. I can say, okay, let's swap out back, put it into inch, but I want to take it now, swap my diameters to millimeters. There are times where you may get tools in millimeters but you'll measure them on the on your um, on your machine in inches and vice versa. So you're able to do that as well. Let me put this all back to millimeters. If I go to the individual field, right click on it, I can actually switch also an individual field to a different unit as well. So controlling the units over here is also a lot more user friendly. You get exactly what you want. Now, I'm going to put this back at millimeters. Now, what if I made a mistake uh, as far as what tool I brought in? As you saw, I brought in a regular end mill. I can easily change it by just clicking over here and picking out the different tool I may want, whether it be a bull nose or a bull nose. All of that can be controlled right in front of you. So you don't have to go right clicking, change tool type. Everything is right in front of you over here. Okay, so I'm going to make it at an end mill. I'm going to change this to say to a uh, 12 millimeter. Okay, you see the values come in there as well. Um, I'm going to have my cutting length. Uh, by the way, you'll excuse me for talking metric. Uh, I usually do work in metric uh, myself. That's why I'm talking metric, but this is into metric as well. Um, well, Kevin's I, preparing the night class with uh, metric part files. So uh, everybody should be on the same page as you, Sydney. Ah, okay, excellent. Very good. Okay. Um, and we have also the cutting length over here. Now, what if I want to add a holder? There's several ways of adding a holder. I can go to my component shanks and holders, and then you can see I have, I can actually double click and bring this in. There's another way I personally like doing it a little easier, is just by right clicking on my end mill, and then I say add adapter and holder. Now, when I do that, you'll note several things. My adapter that came in already came in as a BT40 because my uh, VMID, uh, my machine has already been predefined as having a BT40 adapter. So that's already in here. Now in my holder, you'll note on the side that I have my different holder folders. I'm gonna open up the BT41 and I'm gonna take any particular holder that I have over here. I'll even take just the first one, okay? If I double click on it, you'll see that it'll actually go into that holder spot over there. Now, coming back over here, you can see I can show the picture of the tool. You can see the exact picture of how the tool looks, okay? If I go back to my end mill, you'll also note that it's outside the holder by 35 millimeters. To change that, I can write in a value, but I can also change it just by turning the wheel. You see, just by turning my mouse wheel is what I'm doing now, I can extend it or put it back further into the uh, into the holder itself. Okay, adding more tools, not a problem at all. Go back to my tools over here. And Sid, before you start adding more tools in there, uh, with these uh, holders, uh, when somebody goes to install SolidCam 2021, are they gonna, are these holders gonna be in there by default? Yes, by default, the, the holders that you see now are all holders that are in the install itself. 
um, and, I, and I made sure that, that we'd be working correctly, but today I, uh, I took a chance and uh, I completely cleaned out anything I had. I did a fresh install, and what you're looking now uh, at now is from a fresh install uh, for the holders, okay. for everything in here. So these are the default, and it's quite extensive, the amount of uh, a holder that we have over here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so I'm going to add another end mill. Let's add a bullnose. Okay. Um, and you can see as it goes down over here, we have more and more uh, tools to be added on. Let me go back to the first tool for a moment over here. And you'll, one thing I didn't point out, you'll note we have our adapter, our holder, our tool. You'll see something here that we've never had before. Cutting point, okay? Cutting point allows you to actually adjust for your setup, your uh, setup on the machine, to have different heights where you're taking the actual setup from and different radiuses on the tool. I'll give an example. I'm going to come over here to my cutting point. I'm going to add another cutting point. If I right click, I can say add cutting point. And the second cutting point that I'm going to have here, I'm going to have it as a radius of six point, uh, no, not six point two. I'm going to have it as a radius of five point nine. Okay. Now, basically what this is allowing you to do is allowing you to have uh, use the exact same tool and take into account as you're working, what if you have any wear on your tool? So you can use immediately a second cutting point. That's just some of the, um, um, <clears throat> some of the uh, uh, options that we have with cutting point. Also, if you're using, say, a chamfer mill, uh, you may want to use a different cutting point on your chamfer mill. Uh, for different heights. So you can have different cutting points already defined on your tool. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, and as you see, just adding on tools without a problem, just go ball node, double click, and then just keep on adding more and more tools. Obviously, the values in here come as well. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to close this, and eh, not even bother saving it. I'm going to uh, close this part, and I'm going to going to actually load it with a different machine. I already have a part loaded with uh, created that has a different machine to it. Okay, we'll go to this one over here. Now, if I were to open up my machine, my VMID, okay. Um, You'll know, first of all, I just want to point out one thing over here. If I go to my spindle and my station, you'll see that my station is already uh, has the BT40 in it. Okay. Now, if I go to my working style, okay, is it in the working style? Hold on a second. Yes. Okay. Fourth down. Yes, you can see you can see the fourth down over here it says machine tool setup library name. I already have a machine uh, a tool library set up with the machine. So if I close this, if I go into my toolkit, when I create this app, this part, I already have tools in them. As you see, I have a, pro a total of 11 tools. Okay. Uh, what I'd like to do now also is show the filtering system, okay? Uh, before I do that, actually, let me just go into one of the tools that I have over here. We talked about topology of the tool. We also have in here the cutting conditions, showing all the cutting conditions that we need for the tool itself. Excuse me. Very similar to what we had before. What we also add in here is also in the machining level, which is used for eye machining. That will be also over here. There's still, now, as I said, this is still in a little bit at the end of development. There's still more things they will be putting in here, uh, such as the tool um, uh, material, 
that will also be added, added in to this table as well. But take that into condition that there are a lot more. Uh, here we go. Cutting materials over here. How about that? They already did that. The cutting material for the tool is already over here as well. For, I'm sorry, for the mission, for the tool itself is over here. So basically, as you see, there is no more tab for iData. Everything is inside either the topology or in the cutting conditions of the tool itself. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a little bit on the uh, horse side today, so you'll have to excuse my voice. It's not exactly its uh, best condition. All right. Anyway, so we have all these different tools that can be used over here in this particular case. Now, we have here also a filtering system. Uh, in order to show the filtering system, I'm just going to add a simple uh, pocket operation for a moment. And uh, I'm going to be working on, say, uh, this floor over there. And I'm going to go to my tool. And I'm going to use a uh, 16 millimeter end mill. Accept that. My levels, as you can see over here, I'm not going to do too much fancy stuff. I'm just going to do simple save and calculate. And we see we have well, one operation over there. Uh, I'm going to take uh, another operation and this time use it. Uh, this face over here. Okay. Uh, as you see, by the way, um, I'm sure Kevin has mentioned this very, very often as well, that I'm using the option for creating geometry smart face. So it recognizes automatically where my open edges are, where my islands are within one uh, click. I'm going to use a different end mill. Say a 10 millimeter end mill. And my levels are automatically in there. Save and calculate. And we have our operation over there. Now, I didn't do this to have the operations. I did this to show that we have tools already in here being used. So if I go into my toolkit over here, we have now our filters. Right now, you see our filter has an X on it. That X symbolizes that there's no filter being used at the moment. If I were to open this up, I can say, show me all my milling tools. Okay? In this particular case, all my tools are milling tools. So I'll see all my tools. Okay? For, as opposed to turning tools, I have no turning tools over here, so they're not being shown. But you do notice the symbol on top changes to what you're looking at. I can also show, show me tools used in operations. In this particular case, it's showing me the two tools. Okay. Unused tools, same thing otherwise. Okay. Unused tools, I would say 11 tools instead of the 13 tools I had before. Okay. Uh, to cancel everything out, just go back to cancel filter. Now, we have something in here that's a little kind of powerful. If I click on this, on the arrow, we have here something called advanced filter. I'm going to open up my advanced filter. I'm going to put this to the side, and you'll see several check marks over here. I'm going to get rid of my cutters. Okay, right now, I have absolutely no cutters in here, so you don't see any of my tools. Okay, if I were to open up the plus mark, you can see I have milling tools. Open that up, you can see the different milling tools that I may have over here. You saw before that I had uh, 13 tools. Well, those 13 tools included six end mill, six milling tools, and uh, a chamfer mill and a face, uh, sorry, a milling tool. And they also have in here uh, drills, I believe, which was also part of my count. Okay. In any case, 
I want to show my end mills. Right now you see next to end mills, it shows zero and three. Zero is what's showing because I didn't check it yet. Three is the total amount that I have. If I were to click on the checkbox, you can see all three end mills. Now let's say I had like 100 end mills here for all different types of diameters. You can see I, I can go to this over here now and I can actually say, all right, I want to sh show me all my end mills over here and I want to pick out my 10 millimeter end mill. It'll show me first of all, all the different diameters that I do have. I want to have my 10 millimeter end mill. You'll note in my toolbox, it's showing me only that one end mill. End mill. I'm going to put it back actually delete this over here and you'll see all of my end mills over here again now we also have it says they're equal if i were to click on that i can tell it you know what show me all tools that are more that are more than or equal to a specific uh diameter or i can go even further down to the bottom it will show me okay show me between two values so i'm going to say okay let's do this one now if I do that, you'll see we have two fields over here. I'm going to choose my first one and say, okay, show me anything that's between 10 and 16. More than 10, less than 16. What do we have here? The two end mills, the 10 and the 16 in between the two. So our filtering section is pretty good. The exit. And now we're looking only at those end mills. To reset this, simply go over here, open this up. I can just cancel it out right here. Okay. Now, um, creating, let's go also into creating a tool library. Okay. Creating a tool library. Um, it's also very simple. By the way, as, you, as, as you've seen as I'm going along, I really didn't, what's nice about this also, the visibility of the tools is you don't have to go at the bottom, add tool, then something comes up in these little tools over here, double click in it, then it brings you back here. Everything is right in front of your eyes to see. Okay, now I'm going to close this, not making any changes, and I'm going to go over here Okay, where I have my tool library. I'm going to click on it to create a new tool library. And we have three different types of libraries that we can create. There's one of them is something that we will not use while we're machining, something called tool components. And the other tool uh, libraries are actually um, libraries that you can use while machining. Now, what is the tool component library? Tool component library, uh, think of it uh, as in your tool room, something called a tool crib. When you have a tool crib, all you have is your tools set up in different shells. Uh, your tools are separate. Your, uh, your holders are separate. Your uh, um, inserts are separate. In other words, it's just a, a storeroom for different tools. Nothing is assembled, okay? That's basically where everything is stored, all your holders and everything to have over there. As far as machining goes, this is not something that you would normally use on your daily basis to machine from. Normally, you use it as you saw the way I use it. You take your tool. Now, the tool that I took in, in the previously was actually coming from my components library. The holders that you saw, those are actually coming from my component library. Okay, those are not things that you normally use as far as um, uh, working in it. Okay, that's something you may even give it to a tool room uh, uh, person for him to actually manage all the tools and put all the tools that he has uh, in a specific library. That, that, that's, uh, we actually have a, um, um, a, a company over here in Israel that actually has 70 on a trial, but they use them as a beta a site. Uh, just they bought just the tool table, where they're actually managing the tools 
inside the tool cribs. The tool crib uh, people actually have uh, just a tool table and they're actually managing the tool components. So the people working with them on the network already have all the tools ready for them. And everything is done inside the tool components. So as an operator, you normally don't need to go into tool components at all. Let's go into machine tool setup. The difference between a tool assembly and machine tool setup is tool assembly is not tied into any particular machine, whereas machine tool setup, I can directly uh, define it to a specific machine. Okay, so I can define it to, let's see, a, I'm gonna define it to this particular machine over there, my Hermel over there, and I'll, I'll accept it. And as you see over here, now I'm creating a new tool table. Creating it just like we did before. Double click, sorry, double click, and we have our tool. Drag another tool in here, we have more tools being added, okay? I actually dragged it to the table. I actually wanted to uh, switch this to an actual magazine. Right click on here, and I can mount the, to magazine spindle. Why do we have it separately? <clears throat> a machine is usually defined by the amount of stations they have, amount of uh, magazines they actually have inside the machine. So if your machine only has, uh, say, 50 uh, spin, uh, um, magazines in them, and you're defining 100 tools, you can't put 100 tools inside the magazine. So the rest of them go separately, okay? I, for some reason, dragged it into here, therefore it went into there. If I double click, however, it'll automatically go into the magazine whenever I create it. Um, okay, um, there, now the actual tool table can get, the more complicated you get with your parts, for example, uh, with your machines, I should say, for instance, like Swiss type machines, um, uh, complex mill turn machines, uh, the more of a complex tool table you need to be able to, to be able to define different holders, different angles that we may have the tools uh, laying at. Uh, so that's where the tool table actually comes and you, uh, it gets to be a little more complicated when you're actually, not complicated, but allows you to work with complicated type of tooling as well. Uh, I dedicated this particular session just for the standard use of the tools. Okay, um, Kevin, are there any questions that we know of? Nope, looks like we're good so far. Okay, so what do you guys think? Looking good. Okay. Do we have uh, anybody that is currently watching um, any questions? Um, that anybody would like to ask right now. And for those um, that came in just a little bit late, there is a questions panel in the GoToMeeting um, that you guys can type in and ask right there. Match what's in the machines. Okay, yeah, we got one from Brian. How do you set the tool number to match what's in the machine? Okay, first of all, as, you, uh, as you're um, creating this, you're creating this in the machine with that tool number. And okay. I think what Brian is getting at, if I remember correctly from a Solid Chem Live class, is let's say that he, um, <laughs> Brian, you have to um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but he has two different machines with two different tool libraries. And if he switched from his G milling Haas post over to a Herco post, um, there's gonna be different tools in there. Is there an easy way to make that switch over from one machine tool table to another machine tool table? Uh, there should be, actually I don't have another tool table with me. Um, let me actually save this one over here. Okay, I'm gonna save this. The one I just made over here, save and exit. Okay. Uh, now I had a little problem with my imports over here. To remember, I'm working in a 
uh, uh, development well, version. So well, uh, looks I like, do have a little problem. It looks like I was going the down the uh, the wrong road. Um, the issue is making a new machine tool table when the tool numbers are already set. Oh, you was going to change the tool number? Yep, uh, is okay. what I'm guessing. Okay, so just over here, you can go right click over here by the tool number. Uh, there's several ways of doing it. Um, you can go right here, right, sorry, right click over here. Sorry, here we go again. Right click over here, and we have, well, missing right now, but supposed to be here the change the tool number. You can also go, I didn't mention this before, we also have a quick view over here. Quick access shows the tool number. Now, we did not have it on individual tools, we'd rather have it on the entire component, okay? Not on the tool itself. Uh, and I'll now switch it to say I want this to be number five, okay? So whatever tool that was, but I changed eight over there for some reason instead of five. Okay, I made it number eight. Sorry, my mistake. Uh, and it turned into number eight. Now, um, the reason why we have it on the tool, okay, uh, we don't have it on the tool, but we have it on the actual entire component is very simple. Uh, I don't have an example with me, on with me today, but we have, uh, you also have holders, okay? They can hold more than one tool, okay? Uh, we can have like a, a, um, a holder with, look at the bottom of it, looks like a T, where an where anvil are coming in from each side. Now that's going into the same magazine, but you're having two tools inside that magazine. So I can actually have two whole two tools over here in the same component, but those two tools will have the same number. One may be one A and the other one may, may, may one B, but they will be with the tool same number, tool, same tool number. Perfect. Does that okay. answer your question, Brian? And then he did now, by the way, at, oh, good. okay. At, at, as we do, as we go along, I just want to mention, uh, as the tool tables do come out, there will be a lot of recordings uh, as far as uh, help files going along with it. For example, right now we have a um, uh, help file that all of these help files are actually recordings. Over here, a little overview, uh, simple creation tools, importing. Uh, list uh, list of tools, working with filters. Uh, so we have several different uh, help videos that are in, that we have over there. And uh, Kevin, what I'll do is later on, I can give you the links to those videos so that you can pass them on also. Perfect. Since they don't have the uh, the the beta um, uh, version yet, which they which they uh, which we don't give out yet. But we, I can give you the links to the different videos. Excellent. They're not made public because we haven't released the uh, the version yet. But once we release the version, it'll be public as well. Okay. Now, uh, since I do have a few moments left, um, I don't have it installed on this particular version over here. So I'm going to go out of here. And there is something else other than the tool table that's new, which I have right right now running in my 2020. Um, uh, development version, which will be also in 2021, uh, something called G Code Simulator. So I'm going to um, change my version that I'm working with. Right now, I'm working with the 2021. And I like to close my uh, program when I'm switching over. I'll redo that. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Nothing to do with you guys. That's me. <laughs> Four thirty in the morning. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let me go back to my tools and my add-ins. 
and I'm going to put it in my 2020 uh, version over here. Okay. Okay. Let it load. And is it, uh, just for everyone that's watching, as it uh, gets closer to time for uh, Solid Cam 2021, we'll be doing in the uh, night class a lot of uh, how-to videos in here. Um, this is yes. more or less just kind of a uh, sneak peek overview of the, to see what it's going to look like. So look forward to that uh, coming up in the future. Yes, definitely. Okay, uh, where are we? Okay, uh, this is bothering me here. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go into, uh, let's see, browse over here, and um, yeah, I'll take this. Okay, as you see, I have several different operations already created over here. Okay, uh, in this particular case, I'm using a Haas machine. If I were to right click on my operations, we have here something called Solicam G Code Simulator. If I go into that, it's actually creating the G Code. And the simulation that you'll be seeing will be the actual simulation of the G code. So this is so much we, like uh, kind of like Vericut or Eureka, where it's a reading. The, the this exact this code. is actually this is actually Eureka. Okay, we have licensed into our into our program uh, Eureka, and this is all over here. Now you can see my part on the table. I wasn't fancy this time or adding any. Uh, any kind of uh, uh, tooling, any kind of fixtures to it right now. I just had my setup with my, uh, with my partners up just above the table, so I'm not milling into the table itself. And as you see, play, we see everything directly. And this is actually based on the G code that we have. Okay. So we have the G-code simulator over here, which was added as well. Close it, and that's basically what we have over there. So that's another good feature that we have coming up um, uh, inside SolidCam itself as well. And uh, okay, which is very good because uh, when we uh, solid verify it, and then just to triple check it to run it through the G-code simulator that it's actually taken from that, the G code that's been produced from your operations that it's running. That is correct. Into. That is correct. I, I know a lot of, many people besides the regular G, uh, regular simulators that we have, uh, they, they, they only trust a G code simulator because that's actually showing what their G code is actually doing on a machine. So we have that now inside the program as well. Excellent. Any questions okay. from anyone? Um, Brian's asking if that's going to be included or an extra option. And Brian, uh, that will be an add-on option. So um, when you guys move over to SolidCam 2021 and you would like to use that G-code simulator, that would have to be an additional uh, module that you would purchase. And then I did get one other question here. Is machining cloud and Novo integrated coming in SolidCam 2021? Um, not for us that I know of. Okay. I know there has been we're, some talk with the uh, the machining cloud being added in there. Right, right. right. We're, we're, we're staying down to earth. We're what? We're staying down to earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, excellent. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through. So, but uh, if anyone does have uh, any questions going forward, uh, you guys can definitely send those over to me via email um, or give us a call on the support line and get those questions answered. And anybody that is watching this on YouTube, uh, my email address is below in the um, uh, the summary of the video, so you should see it there. But uh, I guess with that being said, we'll kind of wrap it up for tonight. And uh, definitely come check out uh, the, the schedule. The, the solid cam night class is going to be a little bit scrambled for the next uh, week here just because of vacations and doing on-site training and stuff like that. So we will get back to the, uh, the normal uh, every Tuesday night uh, going forward in a week or two here. So, But um, with that being said, just want to thank everyone for joining the night class and hopefully uh, you guys got something out of it or something that you wanted to see in there and like we Sydney and I have said uh, this is just a very sneak peek at it and there's gonna be a lot more videos coming out going through in full detail of what the uh, capabilities are in solid cam 2021 when it gets closer to their uh, release date so all right well anything else you want to add Sid or Steve or Greg think we're good just to thank everybody for the time hope you found it valuable perfect all right everyone well hope you hope you have uh and i hope today. everyone did, did understand my english <laughs> it's not <laughs> english it's uh uh what's your brooklyn brooklyn yeah my bro my brooklyn uh accent yes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone have yourself a great night bye-bye thank you bye-bye everybody